You ready to go look at cows? Yeah. <laughs> it's hell getting old, but... It happens, huh? <laughs> so how are you today? I'm fine. I feel good. Good. Feel great. Feel great. So how many years have you lived here at this ranch? Well, I've had this ranch 20, 24 or 5 years, but my home was in Mount Airy. Okay. You know, and we finally sold the home at Mount Airy. And we've been up here over 15 years full time. Okay. We spent a lot of time here. I love it. So when did you first get Longhorns? I got Longhorns. It was somewhere. Paul Babington and Ben Gravitt were with me. And we were at a cow sale. We were at a horse, no, we were at a horse sale is where it was. Anyway, we were playing a little poker there. And, okay. and, uh, and anyway, we ended up, instead of the money, I bought a longhorn from him or two. I can't even remember. You bought it from Ben? No, I brought it from the guys playing poker with. Oh, okay. Well, I traded. I took money on me. Anyway. Okay. And uh, I brought them back to my farm down in Low Gap. And I spent a lot of time down there. And I got to liking the thing. And, you know, everybody, boy, you know, had big horns and whatnot. Yeah. And then Paul and Ben and I went to a Jesse Gilly cell over here. And, uh, you know, it was uh, at that time of. 50 inch horn tip to tip was okay. considered uh -huh. considered to be a, a long, you know, a, a lot of horn. It would be compared to 70 today. Okay. But, uh, and then I don't know, I think about six pair there. And then uh, I, I got on that kick after that and Paul Babbage and I, we, we were real close friends and we went all over this country in a period of years yeah. and bought cows. And so out of all the longhorns that you've ever owned, do you have a favorite one? I'd have to think about it. Probably Hot Shot. Okay. Hot Shot was a great bull. Okay. And, you know, a former athlete. Yeah. Uh, and I loved the way he jumped. Okay. That sucker could go way up, you know. I mean, he could. And he was different. He would, he sired, he was good horns, sired black and white, a color, but he was just, he was one of the top bulls then. Or, Not the very, but he was a top bull that I bought at a cell in Fort Worth, and he was owned by Ray Moore. And I met Ray and talked and Ben. He's a nice guy too. I bought, he sold half interest. Okay. I bought half interest in the bull. He had zero idea that I was. So when we left that town, I owned half the bull and his son-in-law and family to be managers at my Longhorn Ranch in Low Gap. And uh, they were super people, which a lot of people will know about uh, with his which Ray's grandson okay. and I are kind of in partners. He takes care of a lot of my stuff, and uh, he's a good kid, too. His grandson, Cody. First class. Yeah. Hard worker. And he was taught by the best, which is strong medicine. So when you, when you look at Longhorns in a sale, yeah. what do you look for when you purchase an animal? What do you like well, the best? Well, at what time in my life? In the beginning or later? Let's do both. We'll do okay. Now. In the beginning, horns wasn't that important. Okay. Uh -uh. What was important to us was the color. Okay. Bloodline didn't have anything to do with it. Nothing. It's just the we would buy the prettiest, as they say. And uh, golly, I did that for. I had that thing for years in my mind, and then I got where. I got where I just started getting involved in, in Bill and Bill Hudson. Yeah, and I are 
partners on two bulls now, mm -hmm. and I've known him for a long time. He's a pleasure to do business with, and I've I've been affiliated with some super people in this business. So, uh, you, so it was color that you looked for at the beginning. In the beginning, so, it was color. So now, what do you look for? Well, now let me tell you. Not only color, a, a strong suit was their disposition. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, if they did, if they had any any part of crazy in them or mm -hmm. what you want to call it. I didn't want them. We wouldn't, we wouldn't touch them. All right. So that was criteria we used at that time. But as we went along and started going out west to the different cells, mm -hmm. uh, we became aware of how important the horn is. You know, for the value, you, you, you got to have the big horns mm -hmm. if you're going to sell the top. Or even the medium, and uh, then I decided I got out of this thing for about seven, eight years, mm -hmm. and uh, I got back in. I got back in. I don't know, two years ago or something like that. Okay. And uh, I, uh, I've gone complete opposite. What I'm a horn nut now. Do you have a particular horn shape that you like the best? Straight out? Yeah. Yeah. We used to like what they call the Texas twist. Okay. Come up, go out. And, yeah. But that's no longer. Yeah. They want that flat horn. Uh, and that's what seems to bring the highest dollars without a doubt. All right. You know, the two bulls that Bill and I own them halves. They're, they're super bulls and they do a heck of a job for us. And we've got Mike Willinger that he's a he's a pedigree expert on what to do here, what to do there, and yeah. who does it and why. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing. It's, it's not like cows. You take a, a great Angus bull and put on, you're going to get black. Mm -hmm. But with this Longhorn business, you, you can't say because a blue one might turn up purple. You know, you don't, you, don't you know. can't match it. You got to go with bloodlines. Yep. And he's, a, he's as good at it as anybody I've ever seen. So what did, you, what did you do before you retired? Before I retired, I had retail auto accessories, utility buildings, trailers, just a lot of things to do. So do you have a favorite story from when you first had Longhorns that you want to share? Okay, I'm sitting here thinking. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with them. Uh, I remember we went to a Longhorn sale and a cow combination somewhere in South Carolina, County to South Carolina. I took my nephew with me and uh, they were selling horses and cows, and I was drinking pretty heifer, you know, pretty good, and I bought a damn, I bought a horse, some kind of damn way, and I was drinking pretty good, and I put down trailer, you know, on my, on my card, mm -hmm. and uh, when we got through, I thought the damn horse was a trailer. I'm talking about one that you pull. And my little nephew, he's about 10 years old, he's sitting over there just laughing like hell. Uncle Tyson, Uncle T But that's a good story, and I, I've had some a lot of fun on these deals. I, I have. I've, I've seen a lot of people. And So when you first got Longhorns, was there somebody that you leaned on for advice? Yeah, I had Paul Babington, without a doubt. Okay. No question. He was an ambassador. He could have been he could have gone in politics. Tell you what you want to hear and smile. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask you a couple uh, rapid fire questions. And okay, you shoot, have, shoot them. Um, what's your favorite food? Fried brim. Fried brim. Fish. Fried fish. Fried fish, okay. Yeah. Um, where were you born? Swainsburg, Georgia. You can tell a Georgian by how slow they walk. Story. All right, and what's your favorite song? Oh, 
cra my crazy song is oh god I'm trying to think of it and it's um, crazy crazy that's my favorite and then uh my, let's see, I was born in Texas and my baby's in Tennessee or something. That was oh, a big yeah. hit. I think it was George Strait. I don't know. It was yep. a big, big hit. And I'd go around and on trips and I'd sing it. <laughs> Everywhere we'd go. All my exes <laughs> live in Texas. Uh, well, thanks for riding along with me today. I've enjoyed it. I appreciate it. it. I've enjoyed it. I sure have.